Hi folks, HR Funk here with part two of my evaluation and comparison between two different rifle scopes that are very similar in terms of their features and functions but very different in terms of their price. If you saw part one of this series, you know in that one I was covering all the features and functions of the very budget friendly CV Life Bear Power 4 to 16 power by 44 millimeter rifle scope in this video I'm going to be doing the same thing but this time around I'm going to be covering the Vortex Viper PST Generation 2 3 to 15 by 44 millimeter scope and the reason I'm doing it this way as I explained previously is because if I tried to do this all in one video and then go out to the range and record everything the video would be extremely long so I'm doing it in shorter segments where I could cover the scopes individually and then talk about how they perform when we get to the range later on. So part one of this video is already up. If you're seeing this one, obviously part two is up. If you're not sure about any further installments in this series, check my channel page and see if there are any more listed there. But for now, let's get on to the Vortex Viper PST Generation 2. We'll start the up close look at the Vortex Viper PST 2 scope with a quick unboxing. And just for clarification purposes, this is the model number PST-3156. It is a 3 to 15 power scope with a 44 millimeter objective and it has the EBR-7C reticle. Lots of numbers there, folks. Opening the box, we find an instruction manual, a sunshade, the scope itself and a pair of Vortex flip-up plastic scope covers. Last but not least is a lens cleaning cloth. So let me get all this packaging out of the way and we'll go on with our review of the scope. There was one last item that I did not see when I was taking everything else out of the box. That is this tiny hex wrench. I found it as I was picking everything up so I wanted to point that out as well. So I misspoke when I was taking things out of the box, folks. What I thought were flip-up scope covers when I took them out of the packaging was actually a bikini-style cover that you can see here. So I really prefer the flip-up covers. That's not what came with this scope. You get the bikini cover instead. And here's our first up-close look at the Vortex Viper PST Generation 2 3 to 15 by 44 millimeter rifle scope. And in case you're wondering about the nomenclature for this optic, the PST stands for Precision Shooting Tactical. The Generation 2 is an evolution of a previous scope that was issued by Vortex. And as I understand it, the differences between the first and second generation are as follows. First off, on the first generation of this rifle scope, the illumination control for the illuminated reticle was located back here on the eyepiece of the scope. It has now been moved to the side mounted turret along with the parallax adjustment. Also, this purportedly, at least according to Vortex, has better glass than the first version of the PST scope. It has a larger exit pupil to make it a little less critical for your eye alignment when you are looking at your target through the scope. Also, it's purportedly more durable. Now, I don't have a Generation 1 PST scope to compare this one to, but those are the things I was able to find with regard to the differences between the first and second generation. The 3 to 15 by 44 version of the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 is listed on the Vortex website with an MSRP of about $1,400. So this is not an inexpensive optic, and it's obviously several times more expensive than that CV Life scope that I'm comparing it to that sells on Amazon for about $200. But if you're interested in this scope, this one comes to me courtesy of the good folks at Optics Planet. And on the Optics Planet website, this scope is listed for, I think, $840. $9 if I remember correctly. So if you're interested in it, check out OP and also before you go there, stop by hrfunk.com for a number listed under the Optics Planet in the products section of my website that is probably going to shave even a few more dollars off the price of this scope if you purchase it from OP. One quick comment I'll make before we move on has to do with this bikini style lens cover that I showed you a moment ago. 
For a scope in this price range, I think this is kind of chintzy. I don't know anyone that prefers this type of a lens cover to the flip-up style lens covers, which are much more convenient to use. When you open them in the field, you don't have to try to figure out some place to put them or in your pocket or lay them down beside you or whatever. And I'm just kind of surprised they went with this style of lens cover, again, with a scope in this price range. So that's a quick negative comment right off the bat that I'll make with regard to the Vortex Viper PST Generation 2. Looking at the general characteristics for the Vortex Viper PST Generation 2 scopes, the first thing I'll tell you is these are manufactured in the Philippine Islands. I didn't know that, but it's printed right on the bottom of the scope, so Vortex does import these into the United States. The body of this scope is manufactured from aircraft grade aluminum alloy, and as you can see, it is finished in a hard coat black anodizing that looks very good. Dimensionally, this scope has an overall length of 14.3 inches. The main tube diameter is 30 millimeters. The objective lens diameter, as I mentioned previously, is 44 millimeters. And the outer dimension of the objective lens bell is 2.08 inches in diameter. And one of the nice things about the 40 and 44 millimeter objective scopes is the fact that since you don't need as much clearance to mount the scope over the bore of your rifle, or over the barrel of your rifle, I should say, you can mount the scope lower by using lower rings and come closer to that center bore axis of your rifle, which is generally considered to be preferable when you're mounting an optic. Something to be aware of is that this is not a lightweight scope. The weight on this is rated at 28.1 ounces, so over a pound and three quarters by the time you add rings or a mount to this scope and actually have it attached to your rifle, you're going to probably be adding two pounds to the weight. So be aware of that, particularly if you're looking at mounting this on something that you're going to carry a long way into the woods when you're hunting, or if you're going to be using it out in the field someplace and have to hump this thing for a great distance, you are adding quite a bit of weight with this scope. There is an up close look at that 44 millimeter objective lens. And these are fully multi-coated lenses in the PST Generation 2 to include Vortex's XR coating, which is supposed to improve light transmission and image quality. Also, according to Vortex, the exterior lenses on this scope have their ultra-hard scratch-resistant coating to help keep those lenses safe if they come in contact with some type of foreign debris or material. And turning things around, here's a view of the ocular lens. This does have a fast focus eyepiece that you see here. And what this does is focus the image of the reticle inside the scope. Now that's something to be aware of. I heard somebody again say recently that this is used to focus the image you're looking at at the target. This will not do anything for the target clarity. This is only to focus the view of the reticle. So keep that in mind. When you set this, it should be good to go. And as you increase and decrease magnification, as long as you set this properly to begin with, you should not have to change the focus of that reticle unless at some point in the future your vision changes. The eye relief for this scope is listed as being 3.4 inches, which is probably adequate but I would personally like to see it on the top side of 3.5 inches and the closer it gets to 4 inches the happier I am. Now 3.4 inches is probably going to be fine unless you have a really heavy recoiling rifle. 3.4 inches should be fine but it's just something that makes me feel better when I know I can keep my eye farther away from that lens and not have to worry about it. The exit pupil of this scope seems to be kind of critical. I've noticed in looking through it that your eye alignment has to be very close to the center line of the scope, particularly at the higher magnifications. Now that's not unusual with optics, but I thought getting up into this price range that that would probably be a little bit more generous and it doesn't seem to be so. When it comes to field of view, at the lowest magnification, when you're looking at something at 100 yards, the field of view is 41.2 feet. And at the highest magnification, at 15 power, that field of view comes down to 8.6 feet. The magnification adjustment ring is located in the usual position, just forward of the eyepiece. And it is grooved to help your grasp of this ring while you're turning it from one magnification level to the next. 
And that's good because the ring itself, while it moves smoothly, is a little stiff, not bad, but a little bit. And there is no provision for a throw lever. This is something else that kind of surprised me. When I was taking things out of the box and I noticed there was not a throw lever, I thought maybe that was something you could purchase separately, but there is no place to even install one. So the only thing you're going to have is whatever pressure you can put on there with your fingers as you are turning this back and forth. And that may get a little easier to turn with time and use, but it is a little stiff as it comes out of the box. Turning our attention to the adjustment turrets, I'll start things off with the left side turret, which serves several different functions. First off, this is the repository for the CR2032 battery that powers the illuminated reticle in the scope. And you can see this cover on the outside of the turret right here. If the battery needs to be replaced, you can simply use a coin or a screwdriver and unscrew this cap, remove the battery, replace it with a new one, and tighten everything back down. By the way, you might have noticed when I was taking things out of the box, there was not a battery accompanying this scope. It turns out the battery was already installed, so that's not usually the way you get the battery with your optic when you purchase one somewhere, but the one from Vortex was actually installed in there to begin with. Moving slightly closer to the middle of this turret, or maybe I should say slightly closer to the main tube of the scope, we have the illumination control knob and there are 10 brightness settings for the illuminated reticle that are controlled by this knob and as you turn it and click your way through the brightness settings in between each one of the settings is an off position so that turns the illumination off from the reticle and that way you can position this at whatever illumination you want and then move it one click either way so that when you turn it on it can be instantly on the brightness setting where you want it rather than having to click your way up and down to get to that setting. So that's kinda nice. Now on the negative side this turret is very stiff. It's very difficult to move. Fortunately it has some pretty aggressive texture right there so I have something to get a hold of but it does not move easily. Moving over to the next portion of the left side turret, this is the parallax adjustment. And the parallax is adjustable all the way down to 20 yards, so that's nice if you were going to use this on a rim fire for very short range shooting, or even if you're using this tactically. As a SWAT team sniper, I think the closest distance where I ever set up was 25 yards from the location where we were working and I think as I recall that was a barricade suspect situation. So being able to dial this down does have a tactical application. Going the other direction we go up to 500 yards and then turning it beyond there we get to the infinity setting. So there is a lot of adjustment available in that parallax ring. One thing that I think about as I look at the way this is all configured is there is a lot going on here on this left side turret. So when you reach over here and grab a hold of this, you need to make sure you're grabbing the part that's going to adjust what you want to adjust without changing something you don't want to adjust. So if you're trying to turn your illumination knob one way or the other, you have to make sure you're not changing the parallax setting or vice versa. So all of that to say, be sure you work with this scope or a scope like this and get used to moving these different controls and not changing any of the settings that you don't want to change. On to the elevation turret, and there is a lot going on with the elevation turret, so I'm going to take this discussion from the top down, beginning with this fiber optic element that we see embedded into the top of the turret. This is what Vortex calls the radius bar. And the radius bar is intended to give a quick visual reference to a couple of different things. Beginning with when the scope is indexed to the zero setting, as it is right here, the shooter can verify that very quickly with just a glance at the top of the turret. And so long as this element is pointed directly back at him or her, then they know that this has not been inadvertently bumped or moved out of adjustment or what have you. And if it has been, then obviously they can quickly move it back into proper adjustment. Also, since there are 25 minutes of angle in one complete revolution of this turret, 
if gross elevation adjustments are needed, then quickly turning this to the 90 degree point is going to get very close to the 6.25 minutes of angle elevation setting. Obviously, if you need to make a click one way or the other, once you get close, you could do that. But it would get you very quickly there, going to the 180 degree point is going to very quickly get you to the 12 and a half minute of angle elevation setting, so forth and so on, the rest of the way around the circumference of the turret. And if you need to bring it back to zero, again, once it is pointed straight back at the shooter, then they are back at the zero setting. Now this is the MOA version of the Vortex Viper PST Generation 2. There is a mill-based version if you prefer that system. Looking at the elevation turret here, we can see the scale. And this is calibrated in one quarter minute of angle clicks, as you see. One nice thing is there is a dual scale around here. So for the first revolution, we see one, two, three, four minutes of angle going all the way around to 24 when we get back to here. And then above the zero is 25, 26, 27 going all the way around again. So if you have to make two revolutions of the turret, so long as you realize you've gone past the zero setting, you know exactly how many minutes of angle you have put on for those very long range, very gross elevation adjustments. So I do kind of like having the dual marking on there. Underneath the turret, we can see a revolution scale. So if you have had to go two or three complete revolutions of your turret, you can help keep track of that with the scale there. That's another nice thing. Now, one thing I want to point out, because this is something that bugs me, you can see right here the zero indicator mark on the cap, the turret cap right here, is slightly out of alignment with the zero indicator mark on the scope body underneath. This is one of these little things that is just aggravating. Now this scope cap can be re-indexed to zero. There are three hex head screws around the circumference of the cap. You can loosen those, take this off, turn it so the zero setting lines up again with this indicator mark on the scope body. But a lot of times it's very difficult to get that absolutely perfectly re-indexed. That's something I wish scope manufacturers would be a little bit more cognizant of because it's just annoying. Lastly, the elevation turret has a zero stop feature. And I've read through the instructions for setting the zero stop and that might take a standalone video to demonstrate the process. But essentially you can set the turret so that it will stop its downward rotation at the zero indicator mark for your turret. So if you've taken several shots at varying distances and had to make several different elevation adjustments, by simply dialing the turret back to the point where it stops, you know you're at your beginning zero, and then future elevation adjustments can be made from that point. Moving on to the windage turret, we can see that, not surprisingly, it too is indexed in quarter minute of angle clicks. And also, on the scale, it indicates whether we are moving our point of impact to the right or to the left, depending upon which direction we turn the turret. This is something I don't think a lot about because I always think of my windage turret, and actually my elevation turret too, as working like a bolt. If I turn it clockwise, I move the bolt to the left and I would move my point of impact to the left. If I turn it counterclockwise, my bolt would move to the right and my point of impact for the bullet would move to the right. So I don't think a lot about those markings, but it is kind of nice that it's marked that way. Now there is no lock for the windage turret, so it is free to move and if it gets bumped or inadvertently turned, it is going to move. I kind of like having a lock feature on that turret and that's just not present on this scope. So that's something else to be aware of if you prefer that as well. The movement of both the elevation and the windage turrets are very distinct. The clicks are both audible and tactile, and I'll stop talking so you can hear these. So very nice. I do like the movement of both of those turrets. The Viper PST Gen 2 has a maximum elevation adjustment of 75 minutes of angle, a maximum windage adjustment of 40 minutes of angle, so you've got plenty of adjustment in these turrets for virtually any type of shooting you might be engaged in. Here's a look through the scope at that Vortex EBR-7C reticle, 
And this is a first focal plane scope, so as the magnification is increased and decreased, the size of the reticle increases and decreases proportionately. This is a Christmas tree style reticle, as you see, which allows a lot of different things on the part of the shooter that can be done. Windage and elevation holds are possible with this reticle. Also range estimation as well as moving target leads. And there's a separate manual that comes along with this scope. It's in the same little envelope that had the main scope manual that explains how this reticle can be used. So that's nice. There are a lot of shooters I think that end up with a reticle like this and they either don't know all the things that can be done with it or they don't know how to do those things. So it is at least explained with this optic. The nice thing about a first focal plane scope with a reticle like this is the scale that you see is true regardless of the magnification setting. Since the reticle gets larger and smaller, as I said, in proportion to the magnification level, then whatever it's showing for minutes of angle in elevation or windage is going to be precise. That's the biggest advantage of a first focal plane scope if you're not using a reticle like this or you are not using it for quick windage holds or range estimation or anything like that the first focal plane isn't going to do a lot for you and you might be better off with a second focal plane but if you're using it to perform those functions it makes it very convenient because as I said it doesn't matter where your magnification is set your scale is always going to be true this is an etched glass reticle and one of the things I want to show you let's make it a little bit bigger again are the illumination settings and I'm just going to work my way up through and as I said before between each one of the settings is an off position so you see it getting brighter and brighter as I go and we are back down to the low end so it's very difficult to see there in this lighting but as I keep going that's going to get brighter and brighter and as I said before that illumination adjustment turret is very stiff that thing does not want to move very easily at all this scope is shockproof waterproof and fogproof and it's also covered by the vortex VIP lifetime warranty and that's going to do it for the up-close look at the Vortex Viper Generation 2 PST. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, check out hrpunk.com for all the information from my sponsors like House of Pain Munitions, Optics Planet, Targets Online, all the others listed there. There are discount codes listed there. All you have to do is go to hrpunk.com and you'll find all that information under the product code section. In any case, folks, see you next time, and until then, Good shooting. Bye-bye.